the police have been trying, trying very cleverly to cover up things. And so that's why they're not prepared to dig back in, into what happened that night. There were 52 seconds that elapsed between his going into the flat and Mark coming over the railing like a sack of potatoes. What happened in those 52 seconds? We don't know. There was shouting, swearing, screaming and running up and down the stairwell seconds before Mark's body landed outside their window. The documentary Pete Doherty, Who'd Killed My Son, is released next week. What do you hope to achieve in this film? The film, I think, goes very well through the 16 years and it takes things step by step. So it's quite easy for people who, who view it, including um, scientists and, and um, police and so on, um, they will be able to see how the story has developed and how our quest for, for justice has been very consistent. The documentary that's being released certainly asks a number of new questions and features some new evidence. Do you, in the wake of it, would you like to see those who were present in the flat on, on the night Mark died re-interviewed by police? Oh, absolutely. I mean, for example, we have a, a person who was there actually saying that it was manslaughter or murder. So I think it's absolutely vital that all six of them are re-interviewed. Tell us what you know about the circumstances that unfolded on the night that Mark tragically died. Um, Mark went to that flat there that night because he knew that Pete Doherty was going to be there. And he wanted him, Pete Doherty, to attend the play that he was in, Accidental Death of an Anarchist, in, in the local pub nearby. Um, and I think that was quite a valid point. So he went round there. He wasn't uh, received very uh, pleasantly. We, people were quite hostile to him. He had been drinking and he pressurised, well, I suppose pressurised, um, Doherty in, into wanting to come to, to that play, the performance. The atmosphere turned nasty quite quickly and amongst other things, Mark's cap was set on fire by Paul Roundhill and Doherty said to the others, have a word with Mark, Get him out, Johnny. So either Johnny or Headlock, or both of them, Johnny Headlock, um, took Mark to the door and tore his jacket. And Mark was apparently hanging on to the top frame of the door. He was thrown out. And we can see on the CCTV that he goes out of the building, down to the end of the road, turns left out of view, and then within a few minutes comes back into the road and goes up to the flats again through the communal door. There were 52 seconds that elapsed between his going into the flat and Mark coming over the railing like a sack of potatoes. What happened in those 52 seconds, we don't know. But the witnesses from a flat lower down have said that there was shouting, swearing, screaming and running up and down the stairwell seconds before Mark's body landed outside their window. Tell us about what you think are the police failures in the investigation of the death of your son. Well, the first investigation, which started um, when he died, was absolutely a litany of errors. And assumptions were made. And even as far as I would, I would go to say as far as, as lies, with the investigating officer um, telling us three levels of alcohol in his blood, three different levels, um, having said that he committed suicide when he hadn't even seen the CCTV, it hadn't been downloaded. And, and it was just shoddy. For example, the scene wasn't cordoned off. I found Mark's lens in the gutter um, 36 hours after he died. And, and it, it was a disaster, really, and, and quite shameful, I think. So that underpinned the whole of the investigation, really, because I think since that time, the police have been trying, trying very cleverly to cover up things. And so that's why they're not prepared to dig back in, into what happened that night.
Some people have suggested that you have a vendetta against Pete Doherty. What would you say to that? Well, I don't know who's suggested it, but certainly he himself has suggested it. And I think this is his way out for sort of playing and becoming the victim, if you like. Of course, it's absolutely untrue. All I want is to find who was involved in Mark's death and how he came to die. There's no question of a vendetta against anybody. All you've ever wanted is justice for the death of your son, Mark. Tell us what he was like. Now, that's not so easy. <laughs> um, as a baby and, and as a young child, Mark was, was pretty precocious, quite honestly. And uh, that could be quite irritating for some people, not least his teachers. But um, he always loved books. From a very early age, we went to town, and instead of buying sweets, we would buy a book each week. And he was reading fluently at two and a half, so this has been one of his greatest loves. Then went to the Royal Grammar School in Guildford on the King's Scholarship, and then to read philosophy at Trinity College, Cambridge. And from there, really, the world was his oyster because he was very competent and very able to do many things with his fierce intellect and work ethic. What do you think the Metropolitan Police reaction will be to this documentary? Until now, the Metropolitan Police have been nothing really but very defensive. They seem to be accountable to no one but themselves. And I've had an uphill battle with them. But I hope and pray that they will react posit positively and reinvestigate the whole case. It can't be left as it is.